At our current spend, we'll blow through our health care budget by October. By year end, we'll be about 30% over budget. Tini, what's the plan? We've been talking about this all year. I mean, what are we going to do to get our numbers back on track? Well, there really isn't much we can do. It's not like freezing a travel budget. We can't exactly tell people not to go to the doctors. Mm -hmm. And besides, our goals and incentives are really not aligned well with those of our employees. How's that? They actually want to cram in more expense before year's end if they've hit their deductibles already. Yeah, yeah. I can see that. But I do have a plan, if you all will hear me out. Not only should it save us and our employees a lot of money, but it should also get us much more on the same page as far as our goals. Sure, let's hear it. I mean, we can't just do nothing and allow our health care costs to keep rising like this. Okay, I have been looking at a new service. I know, I know our broker seems to have a new add-on service for us to try every year, but I really think this is different and really the only thing we need. No more trying to cobble together a solution from a bunch of different services? Exactly. As we have discussed in the past, our healthcare spend is driven by two factors. Price and use. All of the research I have looked at suggests that there's really only one way to drive down use and price without compromising healthcare. We need to empower people with knowledge and support so that they can take charge of their own health care. If we do that, I believe we can drive down our cost by at least 20%, probably more. Okay, uh, I'm not buying it, but tell us more. All right, let me give you a couple of examples that I heard while visiting another company that's already using the service. This dad was telling me about having to take his kid to the emergency room. He drove into the hospital parking lot. Hey, feeling all right? Yeah, just hurts. Mr. Walker, I'm Dr. Johnson from Amaze. It looks like you're headed to the ER. Is everything okay? Yeah, it's just my son. Uh, I think he broke his toe playing soccer, so we're stopping at the emergency room to get it taken care of. I see. Would that be Brandon or Peter? Brandon, my 15-year-old. Would you mind if I talk to him directly for a moment? No, not at all. Hey, Brandon, what's going on? It's like my dad said. I think I broke my toe. It hurts like a... Brandon! Bit. It hurts a lot. It's really swollen, too. Okay, tell you what. Do you see the little camera icon at the bottom of your screen? That takes a picture and sends it directly over to me. So if you can, just take a quick picture of your toe and then hand the phone back to your dad, okay? Sure. So what do you think? Sir, obviously I'm not there, so... I don't know for sure what's going on, but it definitely looks like it could be broken. Here's what I can share with you. I work at the ER three days a week, and generally we wouldn't cast a broken toe like that. Usually we just tape it to the toe next to it for stability, and then have you go to the orthopedist the next week. Oh, by the way, do you know a good orthopedist, or do you want me to have somebody call you first thing Monday and uh, help you find one? Well, I can call our doctor, but yeah, give me a call, that would be helpful. Well, while we've been talking, I've taken a look at where you are, and I see that there's an urgent care about a mile and a half to your south, just down Main Street. And it says here they're open until 8 p.m. and that they have an x-ray machine. They won't likely do anything more for the broken toe, but if you'd feel better confirming that it's broken, that's another option you have. Hmm. Okay, so Mr. Walker, why don't I summarize your options for you? First, you can head into the ER, no harm, no foul. It's purely up to you. I can't tell you exactly what it'll cost because you never know how they'll code things, but it looks like it'll be between $1,000 and $2,000. And you could go to the urgent care on Maine. For your insurance plan, they charge $160 plus $80 for the x-ray. Or you can just go to the orthopedist next week. They usually have x-ray machines in the office. Well, okay. Sir, is there anything else I can help you with? No, uh, I appreciate your advice. Thanks, Doc. 
That's a perfect example how this service will save us a significant amount of money without sacrificing quality healthcare. The key? It's information and a robust service app that quickly surmises a situation and offers smart options. Nice. I think I get it. But there, there's a lot more to healthcare than cutting back on unnecessary ER visits. You're right, but let's look at our current situation. Year to date, we have had 246 ER visits from our employees or their family members. Our analysis suggests that about half of those could have been urgent care visits. Wow. At an average cost of $2,100 per ER visit versus about $200 for urgent care, that would have saved roughly $1,900 for every unnecessary ER visit. That's over $200,000 a year. I'm sure that happens all the time. I don't know how we can expect people to know any different, though. That's the point. They won't know the difference unless we teach them and give them the support they need to make better decisions. The system is just way too complicated for us to expect people to make better decisions because we tell them that they should. So how do they learn about the other options? Uh, I mean, the dad in this story, how did he get in touch with the doctor? Great question. You might have missed it. It was the geofence. What's that? You gotta love it. The GPS in his phone triggered the app when he entered the hospital parking lot. It reminded him that the service was available to him. Yeah, that is pretty cool. Yeah, but I'm not going to be getting notices on my phone all the time. Nope, just what you need when you need it. People just forget or never learn how and when to use these types of services. But Amaze, that's the name of the company, comes with reminders. And they're not intrusive at all. They call them triggers. Triggers, huh? Yes, triggers. Triggers based on where you are, when it is, what you need. Let me give you another example. An employee was at the pharmacy trying to pick up a prescription. Okay, we had insurance and it looks like $978 is due. What? It was $400 last month. Did it really go up that much? Well, I, I don't really have any way to check that through. That's crazy. You know what, can you just hang on to that? I'll be back in a few minutes. Sure. Good morning, this is Veronica. Hi. Listen, uh, I know there are probably all kinds of tools on the app for me to look a lot of this up myself, but uh, I'm at the counter at a pharmacy and don't really have time right now. Can I just talk to you? Of course, sir. Tell me what's going on. I'm refilling a prescription that I've been taking for several years, and it's suddenly $600 more than it was last month. I just don't believe it could have gone up that much. I realize that it's kind of an expensive drug. I uh, am allergic to the usual stuff they use, but still, why did it change so much? I see. I've got your prescriptions up in front of me here. Which drug is it? I only see one that you seem to take regularly. Uh, let me check here. It looks like last month you paid $397. What are they telling you there at the pharmacy? 978. Hmm. Well, <laughs> you're right. That doesn't make much sense. Uh, tell you what, can I talk to the pharmacist? Sure. Sir, would you mind talking to my health advisor? Sure. Happy to. Hi. Thanks for talking to me. This will just take a minute, okay? Okay. Thank you. Let's see if we can figure this out. Okay. I'm actually looking at my client's records here, and I can see the last prescription on the 15th. The 15th. All right, uh, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna put you down and pull it up. You got it. Well, I think we figured it out. Health advisor wants to speak with you. Sir, I think we know what's going on. You just had your annual physical, right? That's right. And the doctor renewed your prescription, right? That's right, but why should that matter? Well, because the doctor wrote the prescription for 300 milligrams. Did you discuss a change to the prescription with your doctor? No, he just said he was renewing it. That's what we figured. I mean, me and the pharmacist. You see, for the past three years, you've been taking 325 milligrams. Now, according to the pharmacist, it probably doesn't make any difference. For all intents and purposes, plus or minus 50 milligrams is about the same. Your doctor probably doesn't realize there's a price difference. Heck, he might even think 300 milligrams is slightly cheaper. I don't know. But because the 325 milligram dose is used thousands of times every day, and the 300 milligram dose is rare, 
I don't even know why they make it. That's the difference. The pharmacist said he'd call your doctor's office and ask them to update the prescription. Oh, wow. Uh, thank you so much. That is crazy. Never would have occurred to me. Thank you. Guess you know already. <laughs> I'll be back after my doctor changes the prescription. I'll be here. Thanks. That scenario is not uncommon. Not for us, anyway. By our estimates, we're spending an average of 20% or more on drugs than is necessary. Heck, in some cases, we're paying 10 times the fair price for drugs. Tiny adjustments to the dose or the form of the pill, tablet versus capsule, for example, not to mention generic versus brand name. Wow. What causes the problem? Lack of information. And we can't blame the doctors. They don't have access to the right information either. And the pharmacist? They can only be of a little help. At the end of the day, all of us as patients need decision support tools and resources and be empowered and trained to use them. The end result? We make smarter, more informed decisions. And we get our costs back in line. I'm liking this, Danny. I'm still concerned, though, that just giving people another app won't do it. Why should we think they'll use it this time? I don't think it's going to be as hard as you think. If we support this the way we would any other major change, think about how we handle safety or quality or customer service. Why don't we put the same kind of effort into managing our health care expense? It trumps everything else on our P&L. I'm seeing your point. We tend to think that people don't care, but maybe the truth is they just don't have enough information so they can't care about costs. They're stuck with it, like we are. Exactly. Let's not sell our people short. I don't think that they want to waste our money, especially when they do find out that we are self-funded and healthcare spending affects their bonuses. Good point. I did an anecdotal survey of our people. You know what? No one outside of this office even knows that we self-fund our health insurance. And when I asked, no one even understands what it means after I tell them. We have no one to blame but ourselves here, folks. All right. This is starting to make sense to me, but like you said before, we, we, have, we have tried new services and nobody ever uses them. Exactly. Valid point, but that's Amaze's key differentiator. They don't believe that you simply solve problems with technology. We need to teach our people how to use it. And I mean everyone, including all of us. We typically budget 20 hours per employee per year for training. We're gonna have to give up some of those hours to Amaze if we want this thing to work. Well, it seems like a small price to pay. Their instructors go soup to nuts showing every employee how to get the most out of their health care benefits, how to pick a provider, even how to talk to their doctors and ask questions. They'll show them all the benefits, and once they know what's in it for them and the company, they'll buy in. Healthcare is a big thing in our lives, for all of us, for our families, for ourselves, but managing it, that's the hard part. That's why we're here today, to learn how to navigate the healthcare maze and how you can use the Amaze app to empower you to get the most of your medical coverage. Because you'll understand how the system really works and how to get the most out of it. We're gonna start with the symptom checker. It allows you to review symptoms and get a list of possible ailments, conditions, etc. Is there anyone here that has some symptoms that they would like some clarity on? I'm experiencing some lower back pain. Great. So we're gonna enter our age, gender, and symptom. Click search, and it will provide a list of possible ailments that you might be dealing with. I'd say back strain. By clicking on the quick facts, this will provide information like when to see a doctor, what are some of the causes of back pain. But we can go even deeper by clicking on this green bar, and it pops up our healthometer which helps you see where you're standing. You're not in the red, so it's not like you need to run to the emergency room, but you are in the yellow, so it's something to keep an eye on. Based on the information you have, what would you do next? Well, I'd wanna do some more research. Yes, of course. For that, Amaze has custom designed search engines. Hold it, can't they just conduct their search using Google? Actually, it's powered by Google. But the reason to use the amazing search engine is that it provides more relevant and reliable information without all of those ads and other nonsense. In this day and age, the problem isn't getting information, it's getting good information, information you can trust. And the Amaze search engine delivers that. 
It only references the best websites and other important information. In this little app, you have access to thousands of video lessons. Like what? Everything from general health and wellness to symptoms, diagnosis, treatment, and recovery. What about alternative medicine? Alternative medicine, of course. And you can find more about it using your Amaze search engine. What if you need more in-depth information? And you need that information immediately. Good questions, simple answer. Another awesome feature of the Amaze app is that you can talk to a doctor or health advisor 24 hours a day, seven days a week to review a medical question, seek referrals to the best providers, insurance benefits questions, or to get the best prices, anything related to your health. Video chat anytime, I can get answers right away? Yep, anytime. Helpful, right? But there's more. What about a feature that lets you know what you need to know when you need to know it? It's called triggers. Triggers? Like prompts? Yes. It's a series of prompts that remind and inform you of various things, like things you've already learned or resources available to you, sometimes based on your location, the moment you need them. Nice. Like the incident with the soccer dad. Exactly. The geofence, for example, was the trigger that helped that dad choose a less expensive and equally effective option. So how do you load that up? It sounds like you'd spend a lot of time getting it to work. Nope, the patient doesn't have to do anything. You just allow it to know your location, it does its job automatically. Yeah, what about preparation? Like when we go to see the doctor or even a pharmacy, I feel like we waste a lot of time and money on situations where our employees aren't ready or informed enough to know how to make the best decisions. I, I feel like I need to pay better attention to these kinds of things instead of just blindly trusting whoever I'm talking to. It's kind of a dangerous waste of time. And money. Good point but Amaze has that covered as well. Oh. Checklists. Amaze offers checklists that help you prepare for medical appointments and learn what questions to ask. Yeah, I've been to the doctor enough to know that if I don't have a list of things to talk to them about, I'll forget. But the hard part is to not come off as pushy. I hear you. With Amaze, you get a list of things to talk about and ways to ask questions tactfully. End of the day, with the Amaze app, you have easy access to all of your insurance information. The power of this app is that it helps you understand your options and learn what questions to ask. It's robust, far-reaching, and bottom line, it is the one and only app you will ever need to manage every facet of your healthcare. The other thing that impresses me about Amaze is that they are completely independent of payers and providers. Right, it actually puts the patient first. But what if we change insurance carriers, as we seem to do every few years? Can we still stick with Amaze? Absolutely. Amaze will make things simpler so that changing carriers is actually easier. And that could give us more leverage with them. I know it sounds like I'm doing a plug for them, but it really <laughs> is kind of amazing. All right. I'm in. But we all know what Bill wants to know. Of course. The total cost comes to about 2 or 3% of our annual health care spend but we are looking at a 20% reduction in spending. Probably more. Two to get 20. It's a pretty good return on investment. Okay, so we're clear. Let's talk about implementation. Um, Sarah, will you pull up?